Christ. It's a disgrace. Our God is God. Amen. We have our good churches. We have our fine evangelism. We have our paid singers. We have the best choirs, the highest fires in the country. We have the finest men, some of the most money. We have the intellectual. We have theology down to the point. We can preach it. We can tell it. We can evangelize and bring people in and make millions each year of converts into the church. Our paid singers, our intellectual evangelism doesn't know how to meet a challenge like that. They know nothing of it. They know nothing of His healing power, of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, of the power that can take a shell of a man dying with a cancer and set him free. They know nothing of it. They haven't been trained in that field as Saul and his man-made group was. But let me say to the people of God and to you children, that you might know that God never leaves you without a witness. Not knowing to Saul. Saul knew nothing about it. God had a little David back over behind the hill somewhere. That wasn't feeding sheep on ecclesiastical weeds. He was leading down beside still waters and the green pastures. He was mindful of his father's sheep. And if something running an enemy to grab one of his father's sheep, he knew the power of God to deliver that sheep. God's still got a David somewhere that knows what it means to deliver one of God's sheep by the power of God. He still knows all about it. He had trusted. He didn't know nothing about Saul's armor, neither did he want any of it. He didn't want any of the denominations. He didn't want the old armor up on him. He said, I don't know nothing about it. But let me go in the power that I know how. Hallelujah. He had fed his father's sheep. He had took care of the pastors. He had given them the right kind of food. And they lived and thrived. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, man shall live. The true shepherd feeds them. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if the enemy grabs one in sickness, he knows the power of God. Look at little David stood there. That that guy is a warrior from his birth. And from his youth, he's known nothing but a spear and armor. He's well trained. He's a theologian. And you know nothing about it. He said, that is true, sir. I don't know nothing about his theological training. But there's one thing I do know. That when an enemy come in to take one of my father's sheep, I went with the power of God. (laughs) I delivered him. I brought him safely back to good health again. I brought him back to the shady green pastures and the still waters. And the God that delivered the lion into my hands, and I slew him when he took one of the, the lambs, and he let me slay the bear. Saul, the God of heaven, Amen. go with me to slay this uncircumcised Philistine. We need leadership of the Holy Spirit. I don't know my days. No one does. The other morning I was laying in my bed. 
And I was, I'd been asleep and I dreamed that Joseph was sick. And I'd picked him up to pray for him. And when I woke up, I was very upset. I said, well, maybe Joseph is going to be sick. And I looked going before me in a little dark shadow, rather of a brownish color, and it seemed like it was me. And I watched it, and coming behind it was someone white, and it was him. I looked over to my wife to see if she was awake, and I could show her if she could see the vision, but she was sleeping. I said, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. But that's been my life. You've had to drive me to everything that I've done. Every time anything had happened, I think it was you doing it. And I realized it was Satan trying to keep me away from it. I said, if you could only leave me. And as I looked, I seen the prettiest face I ever saw on a man. He was in front of me looking back. He raised his hand and got a hold of my hand and started moving this away. The vision left me. Last Sunday morning, I was waking up early. That was on Saturday, this vision. I was always wearied. I've always thought of dying. At me being 50, my time has not been think was too long. And I wondered what I would be in this theophany, celestial body. Would it be that I'd see my precious friends and say, a little white fog going by and say, there goes Brother Neville, or he couldn't say, hello, Brother Branham, and when Jesus come, then I'd be man again. I often thought that I was dreaming that I was out west, and I'm coming down to a little sagebrush place, and my wife was with me, and we'd been trout fishing, and I stopped and and uh, opened up the gate, and the skies were so pretty. They didn't look like they do over the valley here. They were blue and the pretty white clouds. And I said to wife, I said, we ought to have been out here a long time ago, honey. She said, for the children's sake, we should have been, Billy. I said, that's, I woke up. Mother, I'm screaming so much, I wonder why. And I looked down, and she was laying by me, <clears throat> and I raised up on my pillow, as many of you people have done, put my head up on the, the headboard of the bed and put my hands behind me. And I was laying there like this, and I said, well, I just wonder what it will be the other side. I am already fifty. And I haven't done nothing yet. If I could only do something to help the Lord, well, I know I won't be mortal. Half of my time is gone, at least, or more than half. If I live to be as old as my people, still half my time is gone. And I looked around, and I was laying there fixing to get up. It's about seven o'clock. I said, I. I believe I'll go down to church this morning. If I am hoarse, I'd like to hear Brother Neville preach. So I, I said, are you awake, honey? And she was sleeping very soundly. And <clears throat> I don't want you to miss this. It has changed me. I can't be the same Brother Brandon that I was. And I looked, and I heard something kept saying, you're just starting, press the battle. Just keep pressing. I shook my head a minute, and I thought, well, I'm probably just thinking like this, you know, your person's going to get some imaginations. And I said, I just probably imagine that. It said, Press the battle. Keep going. Keep going. I said, maybe I said it. And I put my lips within my teeth and put my hand over my mouth. And there it come again. said, 
just keep pressing. If you only knew what was at the end of the road. And it seemed like I could hear Grim Snelling or somebody that sang that song like this. He sings it here, Anna Mae and all of you all. I'm homesick and blue, and I want to see Jesus. I would like to hear those sweet harbor bells chime. It would brighten my path and would banish all fears. Lord, let me look past the curtain of time. You've heard it saying you're at the church. And I heard something say, would you like to see just beyond the curtain? I said, it would have helped me so much. And I looked in just a moment, I one breath, I'd come into a little place that slanted. I looked back and there I was laying on the bed. And I said, this is a strange thing. Now, I would not want you to repeat this. This is before my church or my sheep that I am pastoring. Whether it was I was in this body or out, or it was a translation, it wasn't like any vision I ever had. I could look there and I could look here. And when I hit that little place, I've never seen so many people come running, screaming, Oh, our precious brother. And I looked in young women, maybe in their early 20s, 18 to 20. They were throwing their arms around me and screaming, Our precious brother, here come young men in the brilliance of young manhood and their eyes glistening and looking like stars on a darkened night, their teeth as white as pearl, and they were screaming and grabbing me and screaming, Oh, our precious brother. And I stopped and I looked and I was young. I looked back at my old body laying there with my hands behind my head. And I said, I don't understand this. And these young women throwing their arms around me. Now I do realize this is the mixed audience. And I say this with the sweetness and with the mellowness of the spirit. Man cannot put your arm around women without uh, a human sensation. But it wasn't there. There was no yesterday nor tomorrow. They didn't get tired. They were... i never seen such pretty women in all my life. They had hair way down to their waistline, long skirts to their feet, and they were just a hugging me. It wasn't a hug like even my own sister sitting there would hug me. They were not kissing me, and I was not kissing them. It was something that I, I have not got the, the vocabulary. I haven't got the words to say. Perfection wouldn't touch it. Suburb wouldn't even touch it nowhere. It was something that I never, you just have to be there. And I looked this way and that way and they were coming by the thousands. And I said, no, I don't understand this. I said, well, they, and here come hope. That was my first wife. She ran and never said my husband. She said my precious brother. And when she hugged me, there was another woman standing there that hugged me and then hope hugged this woman. And each one, and I thought, Oh, this has to be something different. It can't be. There's something. Oh, would I ever want to go back to that old carcass again? I looked around there and I thought, what is this? And I looked real good and I, I said, I, I can't understand this. 
But hope seemed to be like uh, a, a guest of honor. She was no different, but just like a guest of honor. And I heard a voice then that spoke to me that was in the room said, This is what you preach was the Holy Ghost. This is perfect love. And nothing can enter here without it. I am more determined than ever in my life that it takes perfect love to enter there. There was no jealousy. There was no tiredness. There was no death. Sickness could never in there. Mortality could, could never make you old. And um, they could not cry. It was just one joy, oh, my precious brother. And they took me up and set me up on a great big high place. And I thought, I am not dreaming. I'm looking back at my, my body laying down on the bed. And it set me up there. And I said, oh, I shouldn't sit up here. And here come women and men from both sides, just in the bloom of youth, screaming. And one woman was standing there, and she screamed, Oh, my precious brother. Oh, we are so happy to see you here. I said, I don't understand this. And then that voice that was speaking from above me said, You know, it is written in the Bible that the prophets were gathered with their people. And I said, Yes, I remember that in the Scriptures. said, Well, this is when you will gather with your people. I said, Then they'll be real. And I can feel them. Oh, yes. I said, But there's millions. There's not that many Branhams. And that boy said, They're not Branhams. That's your converts. Amen. That's the ones that you've led to the Lord. And said some of them women there, she thinks it's so beautiful, were better than 90 years old. When you led them to the Lord, no wonder they're screaming, our precious brother. And they screamed all at once that if you hadn't have went, we wouldn't be here. I looked around and I thought, well, I don't get it. I said, oh, where is Jesus? I want to see him so bad. They said, now, he's just a little higher, right up that way. Said, someday he will come to you. He said, you were sent for a leader. And God will come, and when he does, he'll judge you according to what you taught them. First, whether they go in or not, we'll go in according to your teaching. I said, oh, I'm so glad. If Paul, does he have to stand like this? Does Peter have to stand like this? Yes. I said, then I preached every word that they preached. I never did it from one side to the other. Were they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? I did too. Were they taught the baptism of the Holy Ghost? I did too. Whatever they taught, I did too. And then people screamed and said, we know that and we know we're going with you someday back to earth. Said, Jesus will come and you'll be judged according to the word that you preached us. And then, if you are accepted at that time, which you will be, and said, then you will present us to him as your trophies of your ministry. Said, you will guide us to him. And all together we'll go back to the earth to live forever. I said, do I have to return back now? Yes, but keep pressing on. I looked and I could see the people just as far as I could see still coming, wanting to hug me, screaming. Our precious brother, just then a voice said, all that you ever loved... And all that ever loved you, God has given you here. Then I looked and here come my old dog come walking up. Here come my horse and laid his head upon my shoulder and nickered. That all that you ever loved and all that 
never loved you, God has given them into your hand. Through your ministry. And I felt myself move from that beautiful place. And I looked around. I said, are you awake, honey? She's still asleep. And I thought, oh, God. Oh, help me, oh, God. Never let me compromise with one word. Let me stay right straight on that word. And preach it. I don't care what comes or goes, what anybody does, how many saws of sons of Kish rise, how many of this, that, or the other. Let me, Lord, press to that place. All fear of death. I say this is my Bible before me this morning. I've got a little boy there, four years old, to be raised. I've got a nine-year-old girl and a teenager that I'm thankful for that's turned the way of the Lord. Amen. God, let me live to bring them up in the admonition of God. And above that, the whole world seems to scream to me. Ninety-year-old women and men and all kinds. If you hadn't went, we wouldn't have been here. God, let me press the bell. But if it comes to dying, I am no more. Uh, it would be a joy. It would be a pleasure to enter from this corruption and disgrace. If I could make up the other 100 billion miles high. A square block, and that's perfect love. Each step this way, it narrows. Until we get down to where we are now, it would be just merely a shadow of corruption. That little something that we can sense and feel that there's something somewhere we don't know what it is. Oh, my precious friend. Hey. My beloved, my 